Hello and welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you're new. My name is Kristen. I'm a housewife, a mom. <laughs> um, can't remember how I start my videos. So I thought today we would do or start working on like four dinner ideas, okay? So I had a rather large beef round top roast. I bought it because on clearance. I don't really know what to do with it. So this is the other half of it. It's quite big and I know my kids won't eat any of it. Um, so I cut it in half, we did small bite-sized pieces here. Um, I tossed them in some Uncle Buck's chicken fry mix just because we had it on hand and we never use it, along with some Weber steak and chops. And then there's a little bit of oil on the oven for them to cook in. And we just wanna get them a nice crispy coating. If you don't have any kind of fry mix on hand, just use some, oh, what's it called? Cornstarch, toss them in cornstarch. They'll give you the nice little coating on the outside that we are looking for. So I'm gonna real quick flip everything over and I'll show you the rest of what we need. Okay, I've got a pot of water coming up to boil. It has been salted. Make sure you salt your water before you boil it. And I believe what it does is it makes it boil at a higher temperature. And then my meat, I think, is about done, so I'm going to start pulling it off. It is still a little bit pink. My husband and I do like it that way. So you cook it to your desired doneness, but as you can tell from that, uh, that mix I put on them, they're starting to get a little bit of like a crispy top to them, so they should be really delicious. So I'm going to pull this all off, and once this comes to a boil, I'll show you what we do next. Okay, so both my husband and I are going to eat this, so I'm using two packets of ramen noodles. So we're going to take our noodles and go put them in the hot water. Reserve your seasoning packet for later. And I've also added in um, one bag of frozen mixed vegetables. And then I think I'm also going to add some dehydrated onions as well. A little extra, a little extra flavor. There we go, we're just gonna let it cook. And during this time, let your meat rest. And all these drippings here, leave them for later, we're gonna need them. Just turn your burner off. Okay, we are at a rolling boil. Our noodles are nice and fluffy. It's time to drain it. So I've got the uh, burner back on. We're gonna add in a little extra butter there for cooking with. So anyways, we're gonna take this over and throw it all on top of our burner. Just like so. Shush it all around a little bit. Frying pan does the same thing if you do not have one of these burners. Okay. And next we're going to sprinkle in our seasoning packets on top of everything. And if you guys have any rice wine vinegar, soy sauce, or any other seasonings or additives you want to put in here, by all means, feel free to do so. Honestly, kind of wishing I had done this in a frying pan. <laughs> Live and you learn, because I am going to have a lot of vegetables to pick up out of my stove now. <laughs> okay, we're going to toss this all around and cook it until our noodles get kind of like a golden color. I'll show you guys here in a few minutes. Okay, I switched everything on over to a skillet, because... That was making a giant mess. So, you live and you learn, you know? Went ahead and added in my eat my meat to go ahead and let it get reheated. I wish I had a bigger skillet than this, but I have not brought it over from the other house yet. If you're new here, um, we're kind of in the middle of moving. So, hopefully this works out well. Use, use a bigger skillet if you're doing for two, okay? It's the biggest one I got on hand. <laughs> so we want that sizzle to start happening and our noodles will start taking on a bit of a golden color. That brown color it took on initially was from the sauce packets, but there is, um, there's another kind of color it'll start to take on. I'll show you guys here when we get to that point. Okay, we're starting to get a real good sizzle here. And then if you look right in here, like we got some of these starting to take on like that golden brown look to them. That's what we're looking for. You don't need it all over. 
But that's kind of like the sign we're getting to a place of being done. You don't want to burn them, but you want them to start taking on a bit of a fried look to them. Because I'm tossing it around and seeing, like I've got some back in here, getting some of that on them. There's another one. So I think we are ready to plate up our food. Okay guys, there's our fried ramen. Today we're going to be making a beef stew with what we have left of our top round sirloin. I'm pretty sure that's what this is. Whatever it was I said it was yesterday. Because yesterday I had the baggie with the writing on it. So we're going to start by cutting our meat into bite sized chunks. Nice sized little cubes is about what we're looking for. Remember that these will shrink up as you cook them. So don't make them too small. Don't make them too big. Now you can cut the fatty parts off if you like. Uh, however, this is gonna give you a really good flavor. It's gonna kind of melt as we cook it. So I like to leave it on. It's your choice. Now that I have my meat in a decent sized bowl for mixing, I'm gonna go ahead and toss it with some spices. I'm choosing to use a Weber steak and chop seasoning. It's just a steak seasoning. Uh, you can also just use salt and pepper. That's what most recipes call for but I like getting adventurous every now and then and I love the seasoning, so that's what I'm going to do. Let's give it a nice dousing. Maybe I should have used a bigger bowl. But I just want all my little meat chunks to be well encoded in my spices. I went ahead and moved my meat to a bigger bowl because that little bowl was not cutting it. So we're gonna add two tablespoons of flour. You just eyeball it, it doesn't have to be precise. And we just wanna give everything a nice coating of flour and this is gonna help create a thick sauce as we're making our stew. Okay, now I'm gonna take my four potatoes here and chop them into bite-sized pieces. Uh, use more potatoes if you want to. I'm trying not to overdo it. I have a, a tendency of making way more food than we need, especially when I'm doing like a stew or a soup and then we just eat it forever to the point that we get tired of eating it. So um, it's just my husband and I who will be eating this. So I'm just gonna do four potatoes and uh, maybe a little meat heavy, but that's okay. It's beef stew. I think it's supposed to be a little meat heavy. <laughs> okay, the other vegetables you're gonna need for this dish, carrots and peas. So it's up to you if you wanna chop your carrots or not. Since mine are baby carrots, I'm just gonna throw them in as is. My peas are set out to thaw. If you don't have these on hand, you can always just get a bag of mixed frozen vegetables. It's got green beans and lima beans in it, but it'll be just fine. So let's head on over to the stove and start cooking up our beef. Okay, it's really important that whatever pot you're going to use to make your beef stew in is the same one that you start cooking your meat in. So I'm gonna do mine in the Instapot for the most part. So I've got two tablespoons of butter in here, roughly. We just need to grease, grease the bottom of the pan. And we're gonna cook this on, get this to start melting. Now I know with the Instapot, you can go ahead and do this kind of a thing without putting the pot on the stove. Uh, so feel free to do it like that if it's easier. I just don't have a good place to use my Instapot and be able to film. So we're over here at the stove. So as my butter is starting to melt, we go ahead and start putting in chunks of our meat. And you wanna be able to brown all sides of your meat. So this may have to be done in a couple of batches, but the reason you want to do this step in the same pot that you're going to cook everything else in is that you're going to get little bits of fat and little bits of the flour and you are gonna want all of that to be in the same pot because it's gonna give you lots of great flavor and it's gonna help give you um, your broth. It's gonna help thicken your broth up. So you don't want all those little tidbits that, that are down in there. So just do this in batches as you need. Make sure your beef has some room to breathe. It doesn't need to all be on top of itself. Just layer the bottom of your pan. Let everything cook. You want everything to get golden brown. It doesn't need to be completely cooked all the way through. Just like yesterday, I didn't cook it all the way through. But you want to start getting some nice golden crust going on both sides of your meat. Okay, my beef has cooked for roughly three minutes on one side. You can see we're getting a nice crisp 
golden crust there. So we're gonna flip it all over and go another three minutes on the other side. Okay, I've got my second batch of meat going. My first looks beautiful, has some great caramelization. It's not cooked through all the way, that's okay. It's got more cooking to do later in the pot. New batch going in and I went ahead and put in an extra tablespoon of butter. Now the reason I went ahead and did the extra tablespoon of butter is because you've got that flour all over your steak, okay? And it's gonna need a fat to mix up with, adhere to, whatever. Um, the fat is gonna help cook out the flour taste and it's gonna help it absorb the flavors of the meat and of whatever fat you choose to use, whether that's butter, whether you, you choose to use like an olive oil or a cooking oil of some kind, use butter. It's beautiful with the steak. So that's why we wanna have extra butter in there to make sure we have enough. I'm looking for my tongs. I don't know what I did with them. Did I put them in the sink? I probably did. Anyways, we'll just get this to toss everything around a little bit. Um, that's what I'm looking for. No, oh, I'm saying tongs. Um, everything kind of wants to settle on one side, so I just kind of pick my pot up and give it a quick little move around to keep the fat moving and coating everything. Anyway, so... When you go to put your beef broth in, which is something I've already made over there, you can see it right right there. I've got two cups of beef broth that I've made using uh, boil-on cubes. So you can also use two cups of red wine. It's up to you. I've tried it before with wine. I didn't feel like it made much of a difference. So we're going to just use beef broth because that's what I have on hand. I don't have any wine with me on me. So what's going to happen here is that the flour and the fat are gonna come together, kind of cook in with each other, make kind of a paste. And then we are going to add in the beef broth and give it all a really good mix together. It's gonna to bring all of those little tidbits that are down at the bottom of the pan up. They're gonna mix and dissolve in with your beef broth. And it's gonna help give a nice thick sauce, gravy, whatever you wanna call it, to go along with everything. So when you're doing your second batch or even your third batch, whatever, Throw in an extra tablespoon of butter or a little more olive oil, whatever you're cooking with, to make sure there's enough fat in there for your flour to combine with. There we go. <laughs> I've got the meat out and this is what the bottom of our pan is looking like. That is all flavor and that's stuff that you definitely wanna keep. So this is why you wanna cook your meat in the same pan, you're gonna do the rest of your dish. You want all those little tidbits that are down there at the bottom, you wanna keep them. It's full of flavor. So that's all your flour, your butter, fat from your meat. Whoa, that's a hot pan. <laughs> we're good, we're good. So to that, I've got two cups of beef broth and I've turned my heat down. And we just wanna start mixing everything up. You're gonna feel the grittiness at the bottom. Keep stirring and working that up. It's gonna break loose, dissolve into your beef broth. And it's gonna help to thicken everything up. So just keep stirring and working all that out. I may go ahead and grab a spatula. If you guys have a whisk um, that you feel comfortable using, feel free. All of my whisks are metal and I'm afraid that's gonna scratch up my uh, pan here. I don't know if I would feel comfortable using that. So I'll probably stick with a spatula, something plastic, so it doesn't scratch up my pot. But we're just gonna work all of these little tidbits off the side and off the bottom and then we'll be ready to move on. If you guys were using wine, that would have been the time to use your wine and not your beef broth. So as you can see down in here, as we start scraping the pan, you can see the bottom of my pan, a lot of the stuff that was at the very bottom and stuck on has now come off. So at this stage, we're gonna go ahead and add in some tomato paste if you have it. I do not have any tomato paste, so I'm just gonna use some ketchup and eyeball it in. Um, tomato paste. I looked up a recipe for it. Tomato paste is going to be tomatoes, lemon juice, olive oil, and then like salt, okay? What's in ketchup is tomatoes, vinegar, which is gonna work the exact same way as your lemon juice, sugar, which is not in your tomato paste, but that's okay. Sugar gives everything good flavoring. Onion powder and other essential flavors or whatever. So it should work about the same. We're just giving it a nice flavor. 
that's all we're doing. Just adding a little extra flavor. I've also done it with spaghetti sauce before and that's worked okay too, but it leaves it, leaves it a little uh, Italian tasting. So this time we're gonna skip that and just do a little bit of ketchup in it. A couple tablespoons, eyeball it, squirt it in, you're good. To this now I'm gonna add in my minced onion flakes. If you've watched me for a while, you know that I like the flavoring of onions, but I don't like big chunks of onion in my food. So this is gonna help absorb some of this flour, give us some good flavor. It's gonna be a good mix off. I went a little heavy handed, that's okay. But if you're using actual onions, now would be the time to add it. And then I'm also gonna add in my four potatoes and this is gonna give it a head start on just absorbing the flavors. I'm just gonna give them all a few minutes in the pot over a medium low flame. Again, if you're using a cooking wine, you'll be working with two cups of wine in here right now. It won't be two cups of beef broth. Beef broth. Okay, we have everything over here on the stove simmering and bubbling away, and we've got some delicious flavors and smells happening here in the kitchen. So we're gonna go ahead and take everything off and put it into our, our Instapot. This is kind of what it looks like at the bottom. A lot of our juices have been absorbed and that's okay. And things are starting to thicken up definitely. So to this mixture, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my peas and carrots. This is all to taste, however much you feel like adding in. Like I said, I tend to go overboard. It's just my husband and I eating this and I make enough to feed an army, so. Then I've got two more cups of beef broth. I'm gonna add that in here as well. So if you were doing the wine, you would have had two cups of red wine in to begin with, and then two cups of beef broth. If you're just doing beef broth, it would have been two cups of beef broth and now another two. So that's what everything is starting to look like. Of course, our peas, carrots, and potatoes are not yet cooked and our beef is not cooked all the way through. And our sauce is not quite thick enough. So I'm gonna pressure cook this for an hour and then I'll be back with you. Okay, our pot roast should hopefully be done. So it's time to let the pressure out. Here's a little trick I have. Because if you have cabinets above, I guess I don't really need to do it here, but if you have cabinets that are above where your slow cooker is, so you don't want to have the, I guess the same can go for walls. You don't want to have the steam going up on your cabinets or on your walls that are painted because it can cause everything to bubble. So you want to pull it all back. And then if you throw a towel over it real quick, mine has been sitting for a while. So, or maybe I didn't have the pressure on there correctly. Anyways, my pressure seems to be gone. <laughs> but throw a towel over when you loosen up your pressure so that the towel will kind of keep the hot steam down and out of like your paint and everything like that. Okay, here's our beef stew. It smells amazing, cannot wait to eat it. And I also made up some crusty fresh bread, made two loaves of it, <laughs> to go along with our beef stew and kind of soak up all the juices. Hey guys, tonight we are gonna do a fettuccine alfredo for dinner. It should be super easy. Use whatever pasta you prefer. I have some fettuccine noodles here. Now, we got lucky and my husband's work did a carry-in for Olive Garden and they had all of these alfredo noodles left over with chicken. So, I've got all this yummy pasta that I don't really gotta cook, I just gotta reheat. Convenient for me, I know. <laughs> So I'm gonna take all this and throw it in a pot of water, heat it back up, shouldn't take very long. And then, and I know my counters are a mess. I've got some shrimp here that I'm going to cook up real quick on the stove, I'll show you how I do that. And I also picked up this pasta sauce or fettuccine alfredo, I should say, uh, from Sam's Club, just in case you guys are curious. And I'll show you guys how I like to doctor up my sauces. So let's get started. Okay, we got a good boil starting to go on. And I've got so much pasta in here. I just hate to reheat my pasta in like the microwave or the oven because I feel like it dries it out. So I may not be able to do this while holding a camera. Hold on. Okay, lots of pasta. But doing it in the water is gonna help rehydrate my pasta. So you see some places here where it's starting to dry out. The pasta is still just fine. It's just getting a little dried out, even though it's been covered in the refrigerator. Just getting a little dry. So we're gonna dunk it back in some water, heat it back up and rehydrate it. Clearly I need a bigger pan, but let's get started on the shrimp. Okay, so over here, I'm going to put my shrimp into a strainer. 
and we're gonna give it a nice little bath. Hopefully it's fully thawed by now. And I'm going to have, and I'm going to have one bowl to put the shells in and then another bowl to put my shrimp as I get it peeled. Okay, my shrimp has had a nice little bath and I know that it is uh, not frozen anymore. So now we're gonna take the shells and peel them. Mine are already split on the side, so they should pop out pretty quickly. There we go. Nice little peeled little shrimp. Okay, to my mixing bowl, I'm gonna add some parsley flakes and some garlic pepper and salt. This is some of my favorite seasoning. You can find it at Dollar Tree. It's got garlic, pepper, and salt. <laughs> it's like all three in one, it's fantastic. Every time you touch your raw shrimp, make sure you wash your hands. Okay, I've got butter going on my skillet, and so I'm just gonna take my shrimp and lay them on out. I'll let them go until they turn nice and pink and they're no longer translucent. Okay, we got somebody over here singing their encouragements for dinner. Are you gonna leave? You're not gonna serenade the vlog. You're not gonna let them know how you feel. Anyways, he's singing his encouragements for dinner, so just bear with me. Would you like some cheese, sir? Will that appease the hungry two-year-old? See you later, bye. So I've got like a lifetime supply of pasta over here. So we're gonna do like two jars of sauce and hope that's enough. And then when you got all this extra sauce in here, add a little milk. Not too much, just a nice little splash in there. Give it a good shake, you can get all the extra sauce out. So, much less sauce in there. I like a lot of pepper in my Alfredo, so I always add extra. And then I would normally add Parmesan cheese to this, but we're out. So we're just gonna put this on a low simmer and warm up our sauce. And while that's on the simmer, I'm gonna add my pasta and chicken back in. Now I plan to serve my shrimp on the side because my kids won't eat it, but they will eat the pasta and the sauce. Okay, we have dinner ready to go. For dinner tonight, we're gonna to be having hot dogs on the grill and homemade potato wedges. So I'm not gonna bore you with doing hot dogs on the grill, pretty basic, but if you want a bomb hot dog, baste it in some barbecue sauce. I've recently found that not everybody knows that trick. Anyway, we're gonna do up some homemade potato wedges and I thought I would just show that with you guys because not everybody, I guess, knows how to make that. So let's get started. So this is all gonna be based on, you know, how many people you're feeding. I'm feeding four, my kids will eat potato wedges. Um, so I've got, oh, I've got like two decently sized and then like four small. So six in total for us. Go with what you think is gonna be, you know, best. I'd say one good sized potato per adult and then maybe add in a tiny tot as well, but we like to eat, so just eyeball it. So I already scrubbed my potatoes really well, and all we're gonna do is start cutting them into wedges. And this is a pretty simple process. You can skin your potatoes if you want to. I, that doesn't bother us any, so we don't bother with doing it. So we end up with these nice fat slivers. Now you can either use them, leave them at that size if you want. But I like to make them a little skinnier, cut them in half. So as we chop them, we're gonna to toss them into a bowl. Some people like to soak them in ice water for 20 minutes to pull the starch out. 
I've never noticed a problem with leaving it alone. So once we're done with this, we will start adding our seasonings. Okay, I've got my potatoes all chopped up in, in a bowl. If you like to soak them in ice water to take the starch out, it's supposed to make them crispier. Again, I've never noticed <laughs> a benefit in it. I can't tell the difference, but do whatever you like. So I've got my oven preheating through 375 degrees, and it's time to go ahead and add in our spices. So tonight we're keeping things really simple, some olive oil and some Weber steak and chop seasoning. Of course, use whatever you like, but I know this tastes really good on potato wedges. And I always like to give this a good shake to make sure everything is well and combined because some things are bigger than others and they like to settle, like the black pepper. <laughs> now when it comes to the oils, I just kind of eyeball it. And this is also going to help my seasonings stick, but I also don't want it to be too overly saturated. I don't want it to be like sopping wet. So just a nice little drizzle on the top there. And a healthy dose of seasoning. And then we just use our hands and get to going. Like my grandma always said, hands are made for washing. So don't be afraid to use your hands when you're in the kitchen. Okay, I've got everything well and combined. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick and get out my baking sheet. I'm gonna spray my cooking sheet with some non-stick cooking spray. ahead and toss out our potatoes and then I like to kind of assort things into like a nice even layer I find that it gets the best cooking it doesn't have to be perfect but just kind of give it all a nice little push around make sure you don't have any big piles okay we look good my oven is up to temp and ready to go I'm gonna bake these for 20 minutes come back flip them all around bake them for another 20.